Today, uh, we are going to talk about a story, a story which began, if I want to be really precise, in 2011. However, this group came into being in 2013. So this is a group at the Crisis Lab. This is a group we founded. And this is a group which came into being to, to hack and also to improve each other in IT security. So we believe in talent management. Talent management is really important in every aspect in, the, in IT, even in IT security. And uh, talent, management, talent management is a bit different from, from traditional courses. The difference is that we, we try to identify a few students who are really interested in a given topic, a topic that we think that uh, he can be good at. So basically, we are looking for students like him. And these are our mates. And, uh, in order to achieve this, in order to find those students, we need to, we need to somehow present ourselves to those students. After we find these students, we need to somehow measure their skills. So what are they good at and uh, what they want to be and uh, what is their current skill level? So this is a careful assessment of, of those students. And also we need to find individual needs. So for example, if somebody is interested in binary analysis and malware, we, we try to push him towards that direction and not forcing him to choose crypto, crypto or, or stack or challenges. So we try to identify uh, all the needs that, that given, given students have. And also it means that we need to personalize our training. We need to personalize our, our uh, talent management program. We cannot uh, give a one-size-fits-all course for all the students because everybody is a unique, unique identity and uh, we cannot we cannot uh, reproduce all the materials for everybody. So the problem with university courses is they are just simply not enough to achieve talent management really well. The problem is that they are designed for large university courses, and they are designed for, it's sad to say, but for average students. So if somebody is really fast in learning, he will, be, he will get bored after, after, after a certain course. So we need to find those students who are getting bored after such a course and we need to somehow pick them up from, from the classroom. And also, the problem with university courses is that we do not have enough hands-on uh, exercises. So as a result, if somebody just listens to the course and uh, cannot practice what he uh, hear there, it is just simply not enough. Everybody knows that practice makes perfect. So you have to practice on your own at home or with some friends in a group. But otherwise, if you, if you just simply do not try it out on your own, you won't get the expert. So that's why it's a problem. And also, at the university, we do not have a chance to, to personalize it. Because everybody listens, 500 students in a classroom. Can you imagine it? It's a lot. And uh, we decided that we are going to, to use a systematic talent management program. This program is based on two elements. One is the Crisis Student Core that uh, was founded in 2013. Uh, it's an invite-only group of the most friendly students from our university. This is the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And also, parallelly, we built a platform called Avatao, which is used to, to create our annual CTFs that we call the Crisis uh, Security Challenge. And this is intended mainly for students, for university students. Basically, it was for BMS students only from our university. But since the last two years, we opened it for all the universities in Hungary. So as I told you, this Crisis Student Core is an invite-only group. But how to get invited into this group? There are two ways to get in. The first is the competition, the CTF I mentioned. This is an annual competition, which we held every November, as far as I remember, in October, sometime like this. And uh, this year, we had also had uh, this competition in 2016. And uh, approximately 100 students participated for all the universities in Hungary. Of course, most of the students came from our university because they knew about it. But um, the interesting thing is that, as far as we know from the feedbacks, they really like it. Because it's not about something which is theoretical, but it's something which is practical. It takes two weeks, so it's not, not a real CTF, which mainly 48 hours or something like this, or two days or one day. So it's quite a long period. So you have a chance to practice. You have a chance to look around. What does this term mean? What, what, what this kind of attack uh, is it exactly? So it's a bit different. But the, the attitude is that you should somehow dig into a given topic. We know that you are not an expert, 
but how fast you can learn? This is our question. And if somebody is really good at learning, he can compete, and also he can perform really well. So what we do is we invite the top performers, typically the first three, uh, first three uh, students who score the best. We invite those into our, our group. And also another way is to, to perform really well on our semester projects. We have different semester projects, and on these semester projects, you are assigned a given task. For example, write an operating system. No, just kidding. But really, uh, we, have, uh, we have really uh, tough stuff sometimes. And if somebody is really interested in that topic, he can dig into it, and he shows that he's, he's good at that topic, and he's also interested, wow, come, join us. And also, we have really good guys uh, who came into our group in that way. So we meet once a week, every week. Can you imagine it? Even, even in the winter time, even in the summer time. So we don't care if it's a, it's a holiday. We just meet regularly. Of course, some of the members may be somewhere else in the world. Maybe they are, they are in Taiwan or China. But still, there are a few, few people who stay at home, and they can still practice. Also, these, these people are uh, white. Uh, so the people who stay and who travel where I also and always. So what we do on, this, on, this, on these events? So regularly, we, we just uh, give interesting talks. If somebody is interested in a given topic, for example, a new software just came out, we, we, we show it to others. OK, I'm good at this topic. Let's, let's show what is it. But we try to make it as practice-oriented as possible. Uh, at the beginning, it was, it was more theoretical, so we try to present something, but we realize that it's not enough. So today, what we do is we, you have to bring your own laptop, and what we just present in you know, 20 minutes afterwards, you have to try it out, and we practice together. Another uh, issue what we do is that uh, we prepare for CTFs. We participate on many, many CTFs, so there are a lot of CTFs a year, and uh, we need to practice. And if we don't practice, we won't get a good result. That's true. So most of the time, when we practice, a guy prepares a nice challenge that he could solve from a previous, from, from a previous CTF, and we try to solve it again together. So for example, we create two or three member groups, and they try to focus on that challenge, and we try to solve it in that group. And if somebody succeeds, OK, he may have to each other, he, other groups. So that's our attitude. And uh, by pre performing to the CTFs, we gave birth to our CTF team, which we call Spam and Hex. I will a bit analyze it a bit later. And if we do not have enough topic, so we are just want to have fun, maybe we have a beer, otherwise we just watch, watch talks. So online talks are always available. So, so what is the ingredients for our Spam and Hex? So just uh, a, a small notation. Spam, we know that this is a bad thing, but we if we negate it, it's, it's going to be good ham, you know, in emails. And X is just something like hex, it, it sounds like hex. <laughs> and we end it, and that's all. This is spam and hex. We know it's, it's funny, but that's all. Um, sustainability. OK, that's good. We have some good students, great. But after a while, they are going to leave us because they go to work. Maybe they are not so pushy to stay with us. They have a family, whatever. So we need to ha somehow sustain our group. And uh, it's really important. And also, Chris Lab realized that this can be a strategic asset of this group. So the conditions to sustain this, this, uh, um, this group is first, we, as Chris Lab, we try to present ourselves for the very first year students at the university, or even the a new, new guys at the university. So it means that um, there are certain uh, opportunities at the university pre to present our lab. They visit our lab, and they know that, OK, this lab exists. And if I'm interested in system security or security generally, I know that there is a place at the university where I can go, and I can may ask questions. So that's it. And um, if somebody is interested, really, we, we start, in every term, uh, so-called bootstrapping in IT security training for for BME students, it means that it is a two to 20 to 25 people can join it every term. It, it comprises six sessions, as far as I remember, in different topics in IT security, so embedded security, binary versing, and so on, and so on, and so on. And um, after that, uh, we see if somebody is, is getting uh, ignited by the topics, we, we just splash him. And uh, if somebody is interesting, 
we offer him the opportunity to join our Spelmantech CTF team. It means that he can compete with the senior members. He can learn from them. He can also practice on his own, but I think it's a really, really great opportunity to, to join those members who have traveled around the world, participate zillions of CTFs, and have a really, really good expertise in given topics. So I think it's a really, really great opportunity to join Spelmantech at this early phase. And, uh, but this doesn't mean that we, we admit him into Crisis Student Core. They have to prove that they are really good. So what do we do is we have this annual CTF, this Crisis Security Challenge. And if they perform well, we will accept him. And this is the admission board. And finally, not finally, but inclusion means that, OK, somebody joined us. He has to prove that he is interested in a given topic. So the very first thing we, we expect from newcomers is to present a presentation in a given topic that he's interested in. So just tell us what you are good at, or tell us what is your main focus of interest, and uh, let's do something good. The, the funniest thing and the best thing is that we haven't had real problems with the integration of new, newcomers. So most of the, most of the students who joined uh, after such an event will integrate well into our, into our group. And the last part, but I think a really, really important part, is giving back. So senior members are participating actively on the bootstrapping IT event I mentioned in the second point. So they give back. They, they have these presentations. And uh, I think it's key, because this is a cycle in a way that we can sustain our group. And um, uh, as I told you, new newcomers have to catch up somehow. And what we do here is that uh, we, we can somehow categorize students into categories, into, into, certain, into certain phases. So if somebody is dependent, it means like, OK, I'm interested in something, but I don't know in what. I know that I just want to do something in system security. And uh, that's the point when we talk to, talk to him and uh, try to suggest him a topic. And he says, OK, this is a good topic. I try myself in that topic. Uh, he will try his best, for example, in a semester project. And when we see if this student is interested, and uh, we see that this student uh, tried to make his best to perform well in that topic, he may he, he, he see that he shifts to this interested phase. It's really good. From this interested state in order to shift to involved state means that he can also work independently with other, with other students who are also good at this topic. And if he is really matured, and if he proves that he can work on his own, he can be a self-directed student. And this is the final phase. And he, at that phase, he's going to be a senior member. And uh, at that point, he can give back later on. And now, Thomas is going to continue the presentation. Hello, everybody. My name is Tomás Kocka, and I'm the ex-captain of the team Spamantex. So, we are a CTF team. You may ask, what is a CTF really? CTF is short for Capture the Flag, which is a competition where you have to understand and exploit computer security problems and access secrets, called flags, to prove that you could solve these challenges. The more flags you collect, the more points you score. And of course, the point of the CTF is that you have the most score you can get. There are two types of uh, CTF competitions. One of them is Jeopardy, the other is Attack Defense. Jeopardy is about uh, solving about 20, 40 challenges in one or two days. Uh, this is usually an online competition, which means you don't have to go abroad to solve these challenges. You can use your browser and your tools at home to do them. There are easier and harder challenges, and the score of the challenge is adjusted just accordingly. These events are perfect for learning, uh, as you can choose from a lot of challenges, and you can choose challenges which are match your cur current level. Uh, so you can even solve these challenges even if you just uh, started the basics right now. This is how a scoreboard look li looks like. You have multiple challenges in multiple categories, 
and every change has a score. The interesting part of the change is that sometimes you even get zero days to solve. Um, that means that they disclose the vulnerability at just that CTF. For example, I broke some uh, examples. One of them is a FFmpeg uh, vulnerability, which uh, was disclosed at uh, this year, but we actually got this challenge the year before. You could actually steal files from remote machines with this. One of the other challenges was actually a zero day in the bzip implementation on, li on Linux. So you could create a memory corruption um, exploit which could, which, where you could take over the control of a machine. Also, at, uh, as you will see, we were at the DEF CON finals, and it turned out that uh, we had to protect against zero days there too, because one of the teams actually created a zero day based vulnerability. Uh, so they could take over our machines. Instead of sco collecting scores, they could take over the players' machines if we wasn't. Uh, so if we, we had to filter some packet, packets because we cannot use Wireshack as we could before. But let's talk about the different categories we had to uh, compete in. The first one is pwning which means actually owning a service. This usually means that you have to find the memory corruption bug and exploit it. And uh, this way you could uh, take over the whole service or machine uh, at a remote location and you could steal the flag flags from there. These are one of the hardest uh, changes as you have to know the low level internal mechanism of the device the service runs on. Well, of course, we have tools for doing this. For example, one of the most helpful uh, tools is PIDA, which is almost like a GDB, but a most, more better version of it. So it's a debugger, and we can uh, see the different parts of the running process. For example, the memory layout and, and the different instructions it runs. Also, there is another category called reverse. This is short for reverse engineering. Here is your job is to understand what a compiled code does, and after you will understand this, you can uh, find out where the flag is. This usually, these are although these are offline challenges, so you get a binary and you have and you know that it somehow uh, contains the flag, but usually you cannot extract it uh, a simple way because these changes are usually weighed the flag as an input and they make complex uh, calculations on it and it, they will show you if your input was correct. So if you found the correct flag, but uh, for ev every other input, they will say, no, that's not the correct flag. So that way, if you understand the program, you can understand how how to uh, create, recreate the flag. Also, in this category, you, you usually have to know almost every architecture because the change authors always want, tries to select a, a really new architecture. So we can um, talk about anything uh, which is which in the... Um, so, for example, here is a, a Python disassembly. Usually when you have a compiled Python code, you can use a decompiler and you can get the source code right away. But of course, the, these binaries are usually uh, obfuscated in a way that decompilers crash or, or simply cannot reverse them. So your best chance is disassemble the different codes and understand it from the disassembly, which is a much uh, harder task than reading the source code, of course. One of the other category is forensics. Forensics is about analyzing evidence from captured traffic or damaged data. Uh, 
You can think about network traffic, the image read arrays, the image, image, image files. There are a lot of opportunities. Uh, in these cases, uh, you have to understand the file formats where the data is stored. And usually, they, again, choose file formats which are not that common or, or an average person doesn't really know about them. So you have to learn uh, these formats at the CTF right uh, when you do, do the challenge. Uh, although we don't have enough time to show an example for every category, but I couldn't help myself from bringing at least one, one example. In this case, we got a PCAP file. This is a file format where usually network data is stored, uh, but it turned out it can uh, contain other types of traffic, USB, for example. And in this case, that was the, was the case. So first, we have to find out uh, what device uh, was captured in this traffic. It turned out it was a mouse, because you can find it in the description package. But, uh, okay, it's a mouse traffic, but, but, but what does the operation system with, with, uh, with the mouse? So your best chance is uh, to understand this, is dig deeper, and start to learn, okay, how the operation machine communicates with, with the mouse. It turned out fast that um, it actually communicates in four byte long units, and uh, the first byte is flags, the second byte is the left-right movement of the mouse, the, and the third byte is the upside-down movement. So let's try to figure out what, what's in the, in the traffic. Uh, if you simulate the, the mouse movement uh, and uh, put red dots when the user were clicking, you can see that it's a very, very uh, familiar um, uh, image because it looks, looks like just a virtual keyboard. So if we collect the various positions where the user clicked, we can, and collect these characters, we can see that the text is actually the quick, quick brown jump, fox jumps over the lazy dog, the key is heard you lie sketching last year, and this is our flag. This is why we did this whole challenge, and this means if we submit to this, the scoreboard, our team gets more, uh, our team gets more score uh, points, and uh, we are higher on the scoreboard. Of course, there are other categories like crypto, which is sometimes hardcore mass. So uh, we are fortunate because we have a mass guy who learned uh, not computer science at the university, but mass, so he can solve these. Uh, very twisted changes, and but there are other types of crypto where they are using known crypto primitives. Uh, simply, they are just using it wrong. There are other categories like Stego, which uh, which we don't really like because it's actually about uh, finding out what the author talked, and it's not really interesting in that way. And there is also web. Web is a wide west of the internet. Uh, there are lots of vulnerabilities. I can't even begin, begin to, to list them. Uh, and the other main category uh, is attack defense. They are very uh, different from the previous categories because these are usually at the final events. Uh, that means you have to go abroad and uh, solve challenges uh, there. Uh, attack defense is, uh, at attack defense, you, you get machines with vulnerable services on it. You have to find the, these vulnerabilities, patch them. This is the defense part. Uh, create exploit and steal, steal flag from other teams. This is the attack part. And it's very crucial to monitor the network traffic, as there is a good chance that the other teams will find these exploits before you, and your best strategy is steal their exploit. So you have to monitor the network traffic, uh, steal the exploits, understand them, and simply backfire at them. Of course, you have to recreate the exploit, but 
that can be easier. Uh, also, it's very important to keep these services alive because when other teams are attacking you, these services can go down. Also, simply you can put a bad patch to it and when this happens, your SLA or service level agreement goes down and your score depends on it, so you don't, don't want to do that. Um, here's a picture at the DEF CON finals. As you can see, everybody is attacking everybody. So when you see a, an attack there, there is an actual exploit firing. And we, there were multiple teams. Okay, but uh, enough about words. I broke some pictures. Sometimes the CTF organizers go into great lengths just to entertain the players. Sometimes they even create playable games around the CTF. Sometimes they even create mul massively multiplayer ones too, like uh, on these pictures. For example, uh, on the right picture, there is a gap. You cannot jump over it because you cannot jump high enough. What you can do? You can modify the game binary to make your jump higher, modify the constant in the, in the binary, and as the server does not check that how high you can jump, you simply then can jump over the gap and there you can fetch your flag. Or on the other picture, there are bears. What they are doing? They are trying to kill you, of course. Uh, so here comes the idea, go into the air, jump too much or something like that, so they cannot reach you. Then the game says, oh, no, no, that's cheating. So uh, after four minutes, they simply grab machine guns and shot you from, shot you to death. So you have to find another solution for that. Actually, you had to find the elixir which um, modifies the stats from 10% damage restriction to 100% and then you couldn't kill you anymore. Of course, these pictures are from a very special CTFs. Uh, we are usually not hacking games, but looking at boring screens like these. This time, our mother language turns into assembly and we read hexadecimals only, but that comes with CTFs. We also have a website, I mean, not we, but the scene, called CTF Time. You can find the CTF dates, types, weights, ranking there. And uh, so you can compare your team to other teams. That, um, that way we can say that where we rank. So year, year after year, we uh, get better and better. Uh, in the last two years, we get into the um, DEF CON CTF finals and our position at CTF time because became higher and higher. Last year, we finished at uh, fifth place, which is good enough. Um, as you can see, the CT, uh, CTF uh, teams, that there are more and more CTF teams from year, year, year to year, uh, so we have a much bigger competition. Uh, actually, uh, just this morning, we got into the 10th place this year, uh, but this year we are not uh, really playing on every CTF, just the important ones, so of course we are placed uh, before then, than uh, previous years. But let's talk about where we were in the last three years. Our very first finals was at the Nuit du Hack conference in Paris. We were really excited as we never talked at this point that we will ever qualify to a finals event. The name of the conference uh, means Night of the Hack. So accordingly, mm, that CTF was from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. We flew the same day to France, so we were pretty much tired by the end of the CTF. Fortunately, the irresponsible energy thing consumption saved us all and we could score a third place at our first finals. It was a big step for us. 
Then, this is from home. Although it's an attack defense city app, but uh, it was online. It's an exception of its kind. And we actually won ICTF. Uh, although that we collected everybody, everybody we could, so maybe the so maybe more people were more successful, but we liked it. Next year we qualified to the Confidence CTF in Krakow. The CTF was organized the Dragon Sector team. Uh, they were uh, a top team at that time already, and. They created high quality challenges for us. For, for us. Um, and it turned out they are not just clever, but cool guys too. So we fortunately met them a uh, few other times in the next years. And then happened when we told the impossible before. We qualified for DEFCON CTFs finals held in Las Vegas in the United States. Some of us did not even left our country, and then we found ourselves in another continent. At this point, I'd like to thank our sponsors who made this possible, because the financial part of the trip was much easier this way. Actually, we qualified uh, seventh in the qualifier, uh, which meant, of course, that only six teams were better than us. Oh, that was something for us, really. Then we got to the finals. And DEFCON CTF is actually one of the most important CTF. Because if there's a CTF in the year where everybody plays and everybody wants to qualify, then this is. And only 15 teams qualified for over 4,000 teams. So it meant a lot, of us, a lot for us. Of course, the, piece, the finals was not, was not piece of cakes, so we had to work hard to at least keep up with the other teams because we was first time DEFCONers, so everybody, everything was new for us. After the four-day championship, we finished 11th at the finals from the 15 teams at the end. And then we got an unexpected surprise from one of the Chinese teams. They bought a full bag of alpacas for the other teams. Although we were a bit paranoid at that point, so you have to know we dissect one of them and search for surveillance equipments, but we did not find anything, so. <clears throat> also, as I said before, uh, it was a really unique experience as most of us, this was the first time in the States. Um, so we saw a few weird things. We were invited to Google's VIP party, which was more like a mini conference and a round table discussions about uh, security topics. And also we got some insight to other teams' rooms. For example, we were in, uh, at the after party. They actually got jacuzzis in their room, so maybe there they had better. Uh, so, and after the CTF, of course, we made some sightseeing to check out some famous sites in the US. And actually, we got our first Svantex wedding in Las Vegas. MG, one of our team members who works at uh, Google right now, married his then girlfriend. By the way, his, the next presentation will be his, so stay tuned. Um, then, or then our next destination was Taipei Tai 1. Uh, this was a, the Hitcon CTF. And what I really like to emphasize that it was a really different feeling. Uh, not just the culture the differences, but the organizers handled us almost like su supermans. I mean, like, it was, whoa, you are, we are so, much, so happy that you can come here and we can hack with the best teams in the world uh, together. And compared to the DEF CON CTF, it was more like, the, at the DEF CON, they were more like, yeah, if you don't like something, then you don't come next year. So we can say that it was much better here in that part. 
Also, the city of the Star Wars or Hitcom Wars themed. So every team had their computer controlled light sabers, and they indicated when we were attacked or not. One of our team members is actually playing with one of these lightsabers here. <clears throat> then we won an other online CTF. It was not that. But then our next destination was Yekaterinburg, Russia. Yekaterinburg is actually on the other side of the Euro, so it counts as Asia. And you know what was our first experiences? We got stuck in an elevator. And we didn't speak the language. It was good. But at the end, it turned out good, good because we finished third place. We also released our first single, Highway to Shell, there. No, I'm just kidding. You don't want to hear us singing. Um, and after that, uh, we split. And we actually go to as two teams. but. This is what Gabor will talk about. Yeah, so if we have a lot of things to do, you have to split your forces. So one of our, uh, one part of our team went to, to Russia, to Moscow, to participate on PH days. Uh, the CTF was uh, quite different from previous years' CTFs. It means that they tried to mimic a real environment, and uh, we had to, had to hack real machines, not, not uh, Playing challenges. Anyway, uh, confidence was another uh, competition. We participated simultaneously. It was in Krakow, Poland. It was really nice again, organized by Dragon Sector. Uh, they did their best, and uh, it's really good to, to have fun with uh, our Polish friends. So, our next thing we participated at was a really, really nice invitation from, um, from POC. POC is a uh, uh, Power of Community uh, conference uh, in South Korea, and uh, together with Kiho, uh, this is an AV company in, in China, they are quite big, uh, they invited us to, to participate in a, a VIP hacking uh, conference, and uh, only the, I, I could say the best 10 teams in the world, but really, really, really good teams uh, were invited, so the, I could say that the top 10 teams in the world were invited into this that conference. So the main difference between, between traditional CTFs and that one is that it was a CTF and a conference. So every team had to bring two challenges. So all in all, we had 20 challenges. And uh, you had to present your challenges at uh, the last day. And uh, the better the challenge you had, the better you, the um, presentation you were, your was, uh, then you could uh, just um, raise some, some levels. So uh, we brought. Uh, a challenge which we call Roy operating system. This is an operating system that we wrote on our own. This is a 32-bit operating system, apparently multitasking with full virtual memory management, and uh, even more. So the vulnerability which it contained uh, that the FE registers were not saved at uh, the task switches. And uh, you could exploit it with our with race condition. And the funniest thing that they really liked it. Uh, as far as I remember, three teams could, could exploit it, but so the point was not to bring two, two, two difficult challenges because nobody solves it. It's not so funny. So anyway, Ryuash was our, our challenge that we, that we brought. And uh, our next target, our next, next uh, really nice achievement was uh, the DEFCON finals in this year as well. So we get into the finals again. And uh, but we have to make difference between this year's finals and the previous year's finals. So in this year, uh, the finals was, um, was started with a competition of machines. This is called the CGC Grand Challenge Finals. It means that um, um, DARPA, a few years ago, um, report, um, asked U.S. Um, different organizations, for example, universities and, and, um, and other, other uh, companies, to, to build machines which actually find vulnerabilities in binaries automatically try to patch them automatically, and try to exploit them automatically. And uh, they were a qualifier of machines, and seven of those machines got into the finals of the CGC machines. And this, this EU and this finals event was just the day before the, the human CTF finals. And the best machine 
was chosen, which was created by For All Secure, most of the members of For All Secure coming from PPP. PPP is, is really, really one of the best teams in the world from the USA. So finally, we had 14 machines, 14, 14 human teams and one machine. And this machine was called Mayhem. And we had to uh, compete against this machine and compete in together with this machine. I, I could say it's better. And uh, the challenge was here is that we had to understand the language, uh, what the machine speaks. It means that uh, it was a dedicated platform called CGC platform. It was working with CGC binaries. Actually, CGC is really similar to ALF, so it's a, a modification of Linux, but still it's a, a distinct platform. So we had to prepare our tool set just before the uh, DEF CON finals in order, to, in order to participate in the competition. If you don't have the tool set, if you don't have the proper tools, you just cannot do anything, really, anything. So it was an attack defense uh, uh, competition, and um, this is how we looked like after, after the CTF finals. Uh, we, we finished at the 13th position, finally. So, this is what the route, what we explored uh, during our history from 2014. As you can see, we really traveled around the world. Uh, we were almost everywhere. And uh, our recent news is that we got into the finals of the HeatCon again. So four players per team can fly to Taipei. And uh, this will be in December. And uh, even more recent news is that we we became the seventh on, on uh, Heklu, which is also uh, really, really competing and, and top uh, CTF. So that was our presentation. Thank you for listening, and thanks for coming. <laughs>